WFSB, Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 7. And good morning, I'm Irene O'Connor. Let's start with the latest numbers in the coronavirus recovery. There were only 200 new coronavirus cases reported yesterday in our state, which is the smallest jump since March. 53 more people died, 71 fewer COVID-19 patients are in the hospital and testing continues to ramp up. Well, the number of confirmed coronavirus cases worldwide has now passed more than 5 million. COVID related deaths are now more than 330,000. The CDC updated its COVID-19 transmission guidelines saying surface contamination is not a primary source of the virus, but much about the virus still remains a mystery. With all states at different stages of reopening, an Imperial College study finds almost half have not reduced infection transmission below critical levels. Well, CVS is adding 13 more testing sites today across Connecticut. All of the company's 25 locations in our state will be open today. We have more information about those locations on the Channel 3 app. There's going to be a free walk-up testing site in the southwestern part of Hartford today. It will be at Bachelor Elementary School on New Britain Avenue starting at 8 o'clock this morning until 4 p.m. You must call to pre-register to get tested. You must also wear a face mask. Well, both of Connecticut's tribal casinos are not backing down on their plan to reopen June 1st. Foxwoods will be sharing their safety plans later today. Yesterday, Mohegan Sun revealed its changes. Visitors will be forced to wear masks and get their temperatures checked. Only four people will be allowed in elevators at a time, and there will be hand sanitizers and wipes throughout the facility. Governor Ned Lamont wants the casinos, casinos to wait to reopen during phase two, which is June 20th. I think that's um, incredibly risky, and it's risky for the people that work at the casinos. It's risky for the people that go to the casinos. We have a crew headed to Foxwoods later this morning and we'll tell you more about their reopening plan starting on Eyewitness News at 4 p.m. Well, gyms across the state want to reopen June 1st. They are hoping to avoid waiting until the second wave of openings, which starts on June 20th. We're looking at video before the gyms were shut down. A coalition of local fitness center owners known as Keep CT Fit sent a letter directly to Governor Lamont. In that letter, they outlined safety policies, including, including social distancing at gyms. Well, if you plan to hit the beach this holiday weekend, you'll have plenty of company state leaders expect big crowds at state parks along the shoreline. But you can still keep your family safe. That's if you follow a simple guideline. Eyewitness News reporter Roger Susannon has more. Perhaps the most important piece of advice that Department of Energy and Environmental Protection officers offered yesterday is to leave 15 feet between where your family's beach blanket is set up and the next closest group. By the way, this video was shot before that new guideline came out, so hopefully people will be a little more spaced out this weekend. Deep says the best way to avoid crowds, though, is to visit a less popular state park, ideally one that is close to where you live. Keep in mind, though, that people won't be allowed to swim in any bodies of water at inland state parks because deep officers fear folks may not be able to easily socially distance in ponds and streams. You can swim in the sound, but be careful as there won't be any lifeguards on duty. So make sure to keep an eye on your kids if they go in the water. Also, check online to make sure the park you want to visit is open before you get in the car because parking will be limited this weekend. And once deep shuts down a park, it will remain closed until the next day. Governor Ed Lamont says despite the challenges, he wanted to keep state parks open during the pandemic so that people could escape their home for a while and enjoy the sunshine this weekend. You can't be just cooped up inside all day long for your mental health and um, well-being. It's important to be able to go out and take a walk in, a, in the great outdoors, especially this time of the year. Roger Susannon, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. And we're following some breaking news from overnight in Hartford, where one person is dead, another was stabbed during an attack a few blocks from the Yukon Law Campus. It happened late last night on Sherman Street near Farmington Avenue. And we have some video from the scene there. Police tell us the second person who was stabbed 
is going to survive. We'll continue to follow this story for you throughout the day once new information comes into our newsroom. All right, and weather-wise, uh, our Friday is looking rather nice across Connecticut. Our warming trend that has been underway for several days and also our dry stretch peaks today with highs this afternoon, perhaps pushing near, if not above, 80 inland. Right now, here in the 7 o'clock hour, many communities are in the, say, low to mid-50s, 50 to 55. The exception, Willimantic at 48. It's 55 in Hartford, 54 for New Haven, even 50s in the northwest Hilltown. So certainly uh, milder compared to 24 hours ago. And we have a calm wind throughout many uh, towns across Connecticut it currently and uh, we've been watching the sunrise all morning today up at 524 there it is the big ball of gas rising from our i can view in hartford looking east over the connecticut river our view from new haven you can see harkness tower a beautiful start to the day cloud free conditions really border to border very calm and tranquil checking on the tugboats here from southeastern connecticut with our ICAM in new london and there's the sun again on its way up uh reflecting beautifully on the connecticut river as we look downstream again from middletown so the setup that we've had over the past several days as high pressure has kept us high and dry with the beautiful weather, but high pressure is moving offshore. So that's going to allow a pesky storm system that's been stationary, just kind of hanging out to our southwest to move to the east. And that's going to bring not only clouds later today, but eventually the chance for some rain that will impact part of our holiday weekend, unfortunately. But once we get past tomorrow, Sunday and Memorial Day Monday are looking much better. So here's Futurecast. Tomorrow's weather today showing the sunshine this morning. A few clouds mix in this afternoon, but still mostly sunny. As we head toward, say, sunset, clouds start to increase. And it's after midnight that we expect some scattered showers to develop. And we do anticipate scattered showers throughout the day tomorrow. Now, there could be some brief downpours tomorrow, uh, but also periods of dry weather. So it shouldn't be a washout from morning to night, but there will be an ongoing threat or chance for some showers throughout the course of our Saturday before it winds down uh, later tomorrow evening. So in the meantime, this afternoon high 75 to 80. What you see on this map actually could be a little bit conservative. Some towns may hit 81 or 82 away from Long Island Sound. If you're heading to area beaches, looking quite nice, upper 60s and low 70s, certainly milder than yesterday. Again, clouds increase late in the day. So wear that sunscreen if your plans take it to the beach or if you're spending any time outdoors otherwise today. Uh, so tomorrow, uh, scattered showers again on tap. And because of the northeasterly flow that we're expecting, the clouds and those showers highs will only be near 70. Then Sunday, a mix of sun and clouds, milder 73, and then 75 for Memorial Day Monday inland. As we head through the holiday week and along the shoreline, 67 to 68 should do it for high temperatures, but at least we'll be dry Sunday and Monday. Then next week, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, look at those highs, upper 70s along the shoreline, mid, maybe even upper 80s inland. So some summer-like warmth is on tap. And once we get past tomorrow, our next chance for rain does not come until Thursday of next week. And with that, perhaps some rumbles of thunder. That is the very latest early warning seven-day forecast. All right, Mark, thank you. And a three cares event. Now we are giving away more face masks on Tuesday in Woodstock. Scott Haney is going to be at the fairgrounds from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. on Tuesday. We couldn't help masks for Connecticut without all the help of our fantastic partners and sponsors. And yesterday, we helped hand out 50,000 masks at the Yale West Campus in Orange. Thank you so much to everyone who came out there. And thanks so much to you for tuning in here to Eyewitness News. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. Hope you have a great day.